Welcome back. This is the post game show presented by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. Not quite sure it was the prettiest football game we have had this season, but a 20 to 10 victory certainly writes the ship a little bit, Mike Joseph. Yeah, they're all W's when you can do that, but I look for the Lafayette defense. So played so well, pitched a shutout in the second half, 13 nothing. They came back, they did what they had to do. They have been somewhat amazing in that secondary. 15 interceptions at this point in the season through six ball games. They, we know they came in ranked nationally, and that's just going to move them up the pole. Yeah, and they attack the football so well. Kanai Scott does a good job, and we saw Shane Black step up in the last couple games. He had a little pressure on him with Kyle Sikowski pushing him from behind, but when Sikowski went down, Shane Black stepped up. And another good game for Andrew Shoup as he passes for unofficially 245 yards on a 20 for 33 day. Uh, Shoup now with his sixth and seventh touchdown passes of the year. And of course, Mark Ross has now has four touchdown catches on the season. And for the third time, he goes over 100 yards. And we're going to take a look, first of all, at the highlights before we go down on the field. When we have highlights, we have Mike Joseph. Well, Lafayette really had a lot. We're going to start right here in the second quarter. And this was really a good throw by Eric Williams down the seam. He's going to hit that 6-7 tight end here. And they had it all going on with the run and the pass. Lafayette comes right back with a little play action of their own. Hits Greg Kessel, the big fullback in the back of the end zone to tie the football game. What a guy, Carhill. He really had a lot going on today. He just ran the football so well, stepping in and out of tackles. Him and Tyler Vargo were just electric. And here's Cargill again. He rushed for 47 yards in the first half, came close to 100 yards. Uh, here's a field goal, going to make it 10-7. to seven. At that point, Lafayette had to go into the locker room and regroup a little bit, try to find a way to stop the run. But they started with the offense, and here's Mark Ross back of the end zone. He's going to get Lafayette up 14-10. to 10. Uh, and then, you know, Rodney Gould, really, you know, he goes so unsung, a senior, makes a huge play. You talked about it, Gary. Here's the touchdown by Mark Ross in the back of the end zone. Rodney Gould stepping up today. The freshman, Jamel Smith, made some plays. But we're, we're going to see Ross here on a big third down, go one-on-one -on -one with Colin Bibb. He separates. He comes back to the football. Just good good electricity between the two of them. And then uh, Sherman takes it in from about two or three yards out to put Lafayette up by that two-score lead. Lafayette did what they had to do, found a little bit of a running game, played some good defense, capitalized on a few Yale mistakes. But Lafayette took the ball away and won the second half. Well, down on the field is Scott Barr. He has the coach and our players of the game presented by Coca-Cola. Experience the Coke side of life. Here's Scott. I do have Coach Giovanni. We're still rounding up the players of the game, Gary. But, uh, Coach, while you're here, uh, certainly a tale of two halves today. You spent a little extra time in the locker room during halftime. What in the world went on in there? Hey, same thing we always do. Bananas, pears, and that free fig Newton. So, uh, no, we just got him charged up and said, hey, we had it right where we wanted to be. We knew it could play better. We we're going to come out and own the second half. And, uh, you know, that's what they did. My hat's off to these young men. They stayed together. They never bicker one another. Defense was out in the field, as you said, an awful long time. But the offense knew they could get something done. Obviously, Andrew back again after another week off. But uh, a lot of different people contributing and a team that stays together and fights hard for one another. Well, the offense really responded, coming out with a 12-play, 78-yard drive to really uh, force control from Yale to start the second half. Well, we like when we win the toss and we can defer and get that ball in the second half. John Luce will tell you it's one less procession that he has to be on defense. But, you know, it worked out. We knew that drive was big to set the tone for the second half. And, again, credit to our staff and these young men and how they prepare, not getting down. It was starting to look like things were turning on us. We believe in one another. We got to keep battling. And now it's on to the Patriot League. Yeah, staring straight down the battle of that tough Patriot League schedule has to feel good going into that on a high note. Well, I said at the beginning of the week, we needed this for confidence and momentum. And we were able to seize that. Now we got to do something with it. Well, good luck with the rest of the season. Thanks. Thank Great you. job today. We turn our attention. Here we go to Shane Black. Shane, you can stay right there. Uh, all the coaches were talking about defensive execution uh, before the game started. Not even the game plan hasn't been a problem. It's been the last two games. The plays have not been made. Your two interceptions, your 11 tackles today, really led the way toward that execution. Yeah, you know, uh, they always give us a good game plan, and it was it was on us. We were just running, executing, getting lined up. I mean, I'm sure there's still some mistakes, but we did what we had to do out here. 
Well, certainly you'll, uh, you had a couple challenges with Tyler Varga being the tough running back he is. And the second uh, hurry-up offense you've seen, seemed like the defense struggled with it a little bit in the first half. But getting your rest courtesy of the offense with that long drive really found your game in the second half. Yeah, you know, uh, hats off to that kid. He ran really hard today. But, uh, yeah, that hurry-up offense is, uh, I guess, a few weeks back-to-back. -back. We've seen it now. And uh, we're adjusting to it really well. You know, we, we've been getting the plays out on the fly. So uh, I didn't think it bothered us that much as it did last week. And this uh, Lafayette defense is going to be continually, uh, continuously ranked uh, in interceptions nationally. So congratulations. Great win today. Yeah, thank you, sir. Turn our attention to Mark Ross. Mark, step on in here. I'm going to read your stats. Eight receptions, 105 yards, a touchdown. Your third 100-yard receiving game in a row. That touchdown moved Andrew Shoup into eighth place all time on the Lafayette touchdown pass list. Seems like you are really developing a confidence with Andrew. I mean, uh, it all started last year. I mean, me and him just developed that trust over last season and then going into this season. Uh, I know whenever he's lining up, he's going to give me a good ball, give me a chance every time he gets out there. We noticed that, uh, that the offense really uh, needed to get started in that second half just to give the defense a bit of a break. We talked with Coach Devani about the 12 place, 78 yard drive. Seemed really like the offense realized the urgency of the situation just to keep the defense on the sideline a little bit. I mean, yeah, the first half we just weren't executing, that's all. I mean, the, the reads were there, the plays were there, just we weren't executing them up front, outside, and every position possible. In the second half, we executed and look what happened. So, I mean, it's all about, it's all, it's all about execution. It's all about the W. We yeah. got one today. Our players of the game, Gary, back up top to you. Scott, thank you for a terrific job down on the field today. We're going to take a look at some final numbers before we get out of here as uh, Yale with a good job rushing the football today, but a little bit tougher when you have to play catch up with a freshman quarterback and with four interceptions, uh, the Lafayette secondary certainly took care of business. Yeah, they ran the ball well, Yale, but turning the ball over four times, they had a lot of mistakes and, you know, Lafayette had a handful of mistakes as well, but they limited those mistakes in the second half, which made a huge difference for Lafayette and Lafayette basically took advantage of some of those mistakes and took advantage of some good field position to pump it in when they had to. So the uh, Yale Bulldogs will go to one and four. They have lost four in a row after beating Georgetown 24-21 in week one. Lafayette now back on the winning side as they go to four and two and get ready for Holy Cross. We'll get ready for them too. Please join us next Saturday afternoon from Easton, Pennsylvania when Mike and I will be there to bring you that ball game at one o'clock live on the Lafayette Sports Network. That's it. Lafayette wins it 20 to 10 for Scott Barr, Mike Joseph, the RCN television team headed up by Rick Giho. We thank you so much for spending time with all of us. I'm Gary Laubach. Goodbye, everybody.